It seems like everything today runs off a battery. Watches, controllers, televisions, cars, your computer alone has several. But the most important power source in a computer is actually not a battery at all. Today we're going to be talking about computer components, specifically power supplies. As we always do, let's first discuss what a power supply is. A power supply, or PSU, is an electronic device that supplies electric energy to an electrical load. The primary function of a power supply is to convert one form of electrical energy to another. As a result, power supplies are sometimes referred to as electrical power converters. So what do they convert exactly? Well, currents come in a few forms. Pulsating, direct, variable, and alternating. The currents coming through your wall are alternating, meaning they reverse the direction many times a second at regular intervals. A computer's power supply takes that electric current and converts it into a direct current, which flows in one direction only. If we go back to our human body analogy, the power supply, oddly enough, is the stomach, converting food, which would be the alternating current, into energy, being the direct current. Enough of the definitions, though, let's delve a bit further into these power supplies. You may have heard the term modular or non-modular at some point or another. When it comes to building a PC, these are pretty important. See, a power supply that is non-modular looks a bit something like this. This power supply comes with a specific set of cords attached directly to the power supply, meaning not only is there less options for you, but if you wanted more VGA cords or SATA cords, this is going to restrict you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Non-modular power supplies have typically lower wattage, but even if this is not the case, they are generally cheaper. A modular power supply looks more like this. You may add or remove cards as needed, giving you the option for a cleaner cable management job and if you're that kind of builder, custom cables. However, with the added convenience, modular power supplies are generally more expensive. So Barry, you mentioned VGA and SATA. What is that? Good question. If you look at the back of a modular power supply, you'll almost always see these inscriptions. SATA, VGA, CPU, and MB. On a non-modular power supply, you'll tend to find these on the cords themselves. Essentially, these cords are specifically keyed to a certain component. SATA cords are power cords for the hard drives, SSDs, and optical drives. VGA cords are used to power graphics cards, and in some very rare cases, can be used to power certain sound cards. The CPU cord is the cord that powers the motherboard's socket and processor, and MB is the cord that powers the entire motherboard. Everything that connects the power supply to another component is essentially a power cord. However, there are two different SATA cords, one that powers the components and the other that sends information. There's also one more cord that I did not go over called the Molex. This thing was designed by Satan and is typically used to power fans and lights. Okay, now that I've covered pretty much all the physical attributes, there are still a few more things that you should know when it comes to these power converters. The first one is wattage. See, every component in your PC requires a set number of watts in order to work. If you don't have enough wattage to power the entire PC, the PC either won't work or will allocate the power to the more important components until it decides to shut down. For example, let's say you have two graphics cards that need 100 watts each in order to work. Your PC takes up 900 watts and your power supply is a 1000 watt power supply. This means that one of your cards will not be able to work, and if it does try to do so, the computer will simply shut down. It's always a good idea to have at least 1 to 200 watts over what your computer needs. Okay, so how do I know how much wattage I need? Well, not only are there quite a few really good power supply calculators online, PCPartPicker.com actually records the known wattage of the parts you may decide to pick out. This is very useful, as if you're ever going to build a PC on there, you'll know exactly what kind of power supply to go for. Okay. So you know how much wattage you need, but why does this one say 80 plus gold, this one says 80 plus bronze, and this one says 80 plus platinum? What's the difference here? Well, this has to do with efficiency. See, a bronze rated PSU will waste about 18% when at 100% load, meaning if you have a 600 watt bronze rated PSU running at 100% load, about 108 watts will turn to heat. If you have a 1200 watt PSU running at 50%, a bronze PSU will waste 15%. 50% of 1200 is 600, plus 15 equals 90. That means the PSU will draw in 600 watts, and an additional 90 watts will turn to heat. If you purchase a gold power supply, the amount of wattage lost will be reduced, but the price will increase. The 80 and 80 plus represents the percentage of wattage you will always receive, and the plus bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and titanium lets you know how much wattage will be lost. This again is typically calculated at 100% load. Okay, so Barry, what power supply should I get? 
Another excellent question. There are always a few questions I ask myself before getting a power supply. Firstly, do I want modular or non-modular? If I care about cable management and I plan on upgrading, then a modular power supply is probably for me. If not, then non-modular is a good way to go. How many watts do I need? I always recommend calculating the wattage if you are planning on building a PC. Again, there are many places that can help you out with this. Does the efficiency matter? For most, 80 plus gold is the way to go and it seems to be the standard. I always recommend that as a good place to start and work your way up from there if need be. With those questions in mind, you should be okay. As far as building a PC goes, the power supply may seem like the simplest part. Just pop it in and go, but sometimes it can be the most stressful. Trying to make the cabling look good, figuring out what cords go where, plus that pesky thing where if you open it up and touch the capacitors you die, it can be a bit of a nuisance sometimes. Barry, how do you know so much about these computer parts? You know, it's quite simple actually. Yeah, I work with this stuff every day, but I definitely like to keep up to date, do my research, and playing around with electricity every now and then never hurts. In fact, keeps me feeling current.